Hey guys, it's Lucid. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to be talking about pretender design for middle-aged Atlantis. Um, and I'm going to have to tell you, this is not something I figured out. Um, I mentioned in the last episode this was uh, a game that started over Christmas. So uh, I normally would test nations more than I did this one, uh, with expansion and stuff. Basically, I never really figured expansion out. Um, and I'll tell you kind of what I'm torn with. The problem with expansion is it's hard to do its scales with these guys. There's a few problems. One is a lot of the underwater troops have poison. Um, and the poison will kind of just wreck all your shit because you don't have any poison resistance. Um, and that's, yeah. The second problem is that uh, aside from that, your guys still kind of suck for expansion. Um, and then if you fight in the early kind of mid-game, you really need a pretender. Like, if somebody comes at you before turn 30, and they're good, you, you're just gonna lose, really. Uh, unless you have your pretender to fix it. Because nothing I can see here is gonna do much. I mean, you can outplay them, but yeah, you'll have to really outplay them. Or, yeah. It's not gonna be good. Now, if you're the only underwater nation in the game, which is always kind of dumb, it's always kind of trolly when somebody's the only underwater nation. But uh, if they are, then you can do that. You could be, like, not worry about it. Just, you you don't need an awake pretender. Or even a dormant one. You could just go in prison. But, because that's kind of how this nation wants to roll. Like, this nation wants to roll scales. Because um, they don't really need a bless. And you could get some kind of, I don't know, incidental bless that would be good. Um, yeah, but that's not what we're going to do. So, um, let's talk about what we can do. So, for an Awake Expander, uh, the Ghost King's actually pretty legit. Uh, you, you usually, I, I haven't ever expanded with him. There's like a way you expand with the Ghost King. Uh, basically, I think you probably need like earth or something and then you have to forge him uh an item so that he can not die immediately and then he just runs into stuff and scares it away uh because he's ethereal and with decent protection he'll be okay uh, i think that's how it works i'm not totally sure um i know you can expand uh the worm is probably one of your better expanders it has regeneration built in so that's kind of nice it's amphibious so it can get you on land uh, and then with Earth, uh, having, like, if you get up to Earth 5, it's basically going to add to your natural protection. You'll be at 20. Uh, so you probably want to take a little bit of Earth if you're going to do this. And, uh, yeah, this guy will be able to expand fine. This is probably one of your better options for shoring up initial expansion. I haven't put any thought into what kind of bless he would do, but, you know, you could, like, probably cold resistance, and then... Not sure what else for the water. Probably just like cold resistance and maybe uh, something else here. And then maybe reinvigoration would be kind of like the cheapest, cheapest bless. The reinvigoration would be nice if you put shrouds on your mages. Uh, and then, um, yeah, the, yeah. Then uh, your uh, mother guard too have some fatigue issues. So uh, this would allow them to kind of stand in the middle of some falling frost and uh, they also would have a lot of their fatigue issues dealt with, so that would not be a bad build at all. I think that might be kind of one of the more... This this would be like an eminently reasonable... We'll actually pick it real quick. Um, this would be kind of like one of the more eminently reasonable builds you could do. Something like this. Major cold resistance, minor cold resistance, so you can really just sit in that falling frost and then like three reinvigorations. So this now makes... Uh, putting the shroud on your guys, uh, not a bad idea at all. Uh, and then you can always tank uh, cold scales or heat scales when you're underwater. You're only going to get basically hit from one of these. So that's something almost always are going to want to do. So you can do a trade for this. Um, drain, you can either go, if you're going to have a big land presence and you're going to have the cheap initiates, you may want to go magic and then tank like misfortune or one of your other scales, uh, or you can, well, yeah. maybe something like, I 
you do want a little bit of Dominion. Dominion is always tricky underwater. If you go too low underwater, it's really hard, if you have decent scales, to actually have your scales in your provinces because your Dominion isn't there. Um, maybe something like this. Okay, I, I'm not sure, but you could optimize, but this would be a basic build. This guy would be pretty sick at expanding. Uh, he could take a lot of the hard provinces that otherwise you would struggle with. Being poison resistant is really nice underwater. Uh, the problems with this build is you already have earth magic. You're already going to be able to get up to earth three, earth three, right? Because you have basically guys who can do earth two plus boots and then do troll kings. So you're going to be able to basically fully climb earth without this. So this isn't really adding to your earth magic diversity. And then water, you have mages who are higher than, like you have water five mages you get. So uh, this does not help at all with magic diversity, um, but it's going to give you decent, like situationally useful uh, sacreds who are gonna be really good for on land battles at holding the line with falling frost coming down. Um, and yeah, so that's basically what you could use this for. Um, this, Bottom part could probably be optimized some, but certainly this is probably the safest build in terms of having a good expansion if you're a, not a super advanced player, like if you're really worried about expansion, you haven't figured it out. This is going to make you have a good early game. Um, you could go rainbow. I think if you go went rainbow, you'd probably want to go imprisoned. Uh, sometimes you can Jedi something out with one of no. I don't think anybody here is going to be able to Jedi expansion. Yeah, no way. So, going this guy with the water gem generator could be nice. You already have a nice water gem income. Um, yeah, I don't see anything here in particular. So, uh, I, don't, I don't really feel... You have a fair amount of diversity in this nation with just the randoms you get. Um, you kind of want death, but, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, death is always really nice in the Water Nations, because you can do things like Wraith Lord raiding from the oceans, which is kind of the most cheesy shit. And then Tartarians is, is always fun. I, I don't think this nation plays in, like, one of the things you want to do with Relay a lot is do, uh, death on your pretender, and then do Tartarians and stuff. I don't think this nation plays the same way, where that's a good idea. It's just, it's not as good at, like, to do to do it properly, you do, like, recuperation and, uh, and, uh, death on your pretender. So you need nature death, and then you can basically, you could do that with the Demi Lich. You know, like, something like that. Uh, I'm not sure what you would get here, but, I mean, if you went straight, like, what would you get for Tartarians? Probably too expensive, but you know, something like this, and then you could get your scales and go imprisoned and have really good scales. Uh, and it's gonna be good for that kind of stuff, and you could even put a little astral on it and then get something like this. And this would be like I think this is I'm fighting against the Ryla that has this build. But uh anyway, it's super annoying uh to fight against, but it's not super good for the early game. Uh, you basically have to do a full scales expansion, and then uh, if you get rushed before you have tarts out, or not before tarts out, but really before you have key research for your uh, Kings of the Deep, then you're basically dead. So uh, I'm not going to roll the dice with something like that, as fun as it would be. Um, also going imprisoned, where you're relying on something like Tartarians and you don't have any base way to sight search that, like you have no Death One mages to sight search. Uh, probably not a very reliable strategy. So, uh, like, Relay also gets some base death, which makes it a much better build for them. Um, the Sea Dragon is a pretty good expander. Uh, not sure what you would do for the Bless, but this is a cheap uh, and efficient variety. It can shape change too, so you can put items on it to do uh, casting. Uh, high base protection. Does not have recuperation or anything. It can trample though, which is kind of nice. Low base fatigue. Good unit. 
Um, this guy, Innate Spellcaster, which is one of the best uh, traits in the game to have. So uh, you can probably do all sorts of fun stuff I haven't even thought about with this guy. Um, he is aquatic, which does suck. The, uh, the Sea Dragon's also aquatic. Um, a lot of the stuff here is aquatic. Uh, the Kraken is aquatic. We'll talk about him in a minute since that's a pretender I'm going to use. This guy's amphibious. This guy's amphibious. Uh, this guy's amphibious. Uh, the Earth Snake also very solid in terms of being a pretender. We'll talk about him in a minute. Um, but yeah. This guy can prevent uh, people from blinking or returning. Um, so it can be a good way to trap um, certain types of thugs or things like that. Like golems especially, this guy can kind of jump on them and catch them. Um, yeah, so pretty nice. Uh, what else? Unsurroundable is good. Uh, innate spellcaster, one of the better things. Uh, can this guy expand, though? That is always kind of like the question. And the answer is not really. He has uh, tentacles, which is an AoE one thing. He has this, which is a life drain attack, which is nice. Uh, it is definitely going to help him stay alive. But he has zero protection. Uh, and that is going to be a problem. He does have blunt and pierce resistant. But, uh, yeah. I don't think this guy expands terribly well. Perhaps if with the Quickness Bliss he might. I don't think you would want a Quickness Bliss on your troops though. So anyway, it could be this guy could work. I haven't figured it out, but uh, it is pretty cool to be able to teleport this guy on top of stuff. And uh, you know, you can put like a Amulet of the Fish or whatever on this guy and he can teleport on land and potentially trap some dudes on there. Um, like golems and stuff. Uh, the Earth Snake, one of the most reliable expanders in the game. Uh, amphibious, so he can expand anywhere. Very high base protection and recuperation, so you don't care about afflictions and fear, so people run away. Uh, just super reliable. Um, high new magic path costs, so you probably just want to go, you know, get something in, in Earth. Um, but also a very, very safe way to shore up your early game. Um, and he is strong enough where, depending on what you're fighting, uh, he can throw off uh, early aggression. And the only thing we have left to talk about is this guy for this uh, expander class. And he is the guy we end up picking. Uh, on first glance, it doesn't look great. He doesn't have great protection, so he can't really expand because he will get surrounded and eaten to pieces. He can kill easy indies, but even medium indies will kill him. Uh, he has Recuperation, which is one of the better traits to have on Super Combatants and your Pretender. Um, he is Stealthy. This is one of the best traits to have on Super Combatants. Um, poison Resistance, which is nice. Cold Resistance, which, which is nice. Um, it means you don't really mind being in your own cold scales for fatigue and stuff. Uh, Ambidextrous, which is nice, means we can carry a lot of weapons. You can see Unlike a lot of the other expanders, we have a fair amount of weapon slots. We don't have the normal one or item slots. We don't have the normal ones, but we have uh, arms galore, and that's actually really, really, really good for us uh, because arms are one of the best slots you can get. Um, if we put an amulet on the fish because we need to go out of water, uh, it's going to chew up one of these, but. Uh, like Amulet of the Fish plus Ring of Regeneration, uh, we're going to be very solid. Very solid. Um, and we can then teleport onto the land. Uh, with four arm slots, we can do two shields and two weapons. Uh, potentially, we could, you know, we can go with a ton of different strategies. We could go with some kind of like more repel oriented strategy, whereas we have reasonably high attack. Um, especially once we get all of our stars up, we'll have better attack. Um, you know, we can do charcoal shield. There's just about vine shields. We can do a bunch of stuff. We can also just go pure killy things. You know, like we can throw on a flesh eater. We can do a lot of stuff. This guy gets very killy. Um, he has four tentacles by default, which kind of suck. Um, they don't do a ton of damage. But once you buff up your strength, which is really easy with earth, they actually become significantly better. 22 damage a hit is a lot better than uh, 18. Uh, and then poison ink, which is uh, area of effect two lingering two. So he kind of just emits poison all around him, which is going to do a fair amount of damage. 
Um, unfortunately, this can also hit your own troops, so your Kraken does kind of like to be a solo operator, even though that's not how we're going to use him. He's blunt resistant, which is nice, uh, though not super relevant in the water, and then has fear, which is also kind of nice. Um, he also has Astral and Earth. Now, uh, if, if you've ever read Bal's Guide, he talks about basically getting this guy and not putting anything on him, just taking like the vanilla dude and you don't even care about his magic pass, you just use him as a commander. And indeed, he can be very strong. You can use other people to cast spells on him. Uh, but I think if we do that, um, we're, we're really limiting ourselves. Uh, because this guy is really going to shine when we use his magic pass. He can fill in a lot of the gaps we have. One is, we're an astral nation, we do not have high astral. Um, so having high astral uh, on an astral nation means we're already going to have a decent pearl income. Uh, this is now going to open up a lot of the late game stuff with astral, which otherwise we're, we're really not privy to. Um... And this also opens up the uh, Astral Earth cross path, which is not a cross path we really have access to. We can get it on a very lucky random, but basically we don't get it. Um, now, going something like this on a Kraken, what is that going to give us? Well, um, it, it's going to open up a few things. One is we can teleport on top of armies. Uh, we're high enough Astral where we don't really have to worry about Magic Duel. It's possible... It's like a 4% chance that, uh, or a 3% chance that, uh, uh, an Astral Mage, an Astral 1 Mage can kill, can kill my Kraken, he'll also die. This is high enough where you don't really need to worry about it. Um, yeah. Now, if they have Astral 3 Mages that you think are being set up to do Magic Duel, then you have to worry about it. But we're a nation that has a lot of Holy 3 guys, so we could potentially... Uh, like turn one, like one turn, call our god back. So uh, if they're gonna do that, they're gonna have to lose a lot of astral three mages, which are generally gonna be pretty expensive. And those aren't gonna be the targets we're usually gonna be teleporting this guy onto. Um, also, he is stealthy, which means uh, he can dodge magic face attacks. Uh, and because he's astral, he can't be mind hunted, which is one of the big counters to kind of pretender god chassis in the the mid game and or late mid game. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, with uh, high Astral, he can do things like Astral Tempest, which he potentially might not care about. Like the Afflictions, he doesn't even really care about. He'll get rid of them. Um, he can also do uh, Earthquake. Uh, and then he can also buff himself up to be an absolute monster. Now, the difference is, you know, like, I, I think I was having a di disagreement, let's say, with some people on the forum about Uttervast, which we don't have access to, but for Relay you can get it. The thing is, is the Uttervast sucks. It's basically a super expensive light raiding chassis. And yeah, it can jump around and raid it and be annoying, but you just take the province when it leaves. And yeah, you can set some things up where you kill the, the ra counter raiders when they come and take it back. But... Um... It's going to have a real hard time killing a lot of armies, and it's mostly because it's teleporting, so you can be moving around, not magic phase very often. Uh, this guy can delete armies. Uh, once you have, uh, like, with the paths we're going to take on him, um, like this, uh, he's going to be doing Iron Skin, Temper Flash, Body Ethereal, Astral Shield, Resist Magic. Uh, he will be very, very hard to kill. Because he's going to have a ton of HP, especially if he's jumping in from Friendly Dominion. He'll be able to regenerate. Uh, he will have a t He'll be extremely killy. Uh, just killing everything nearby. Um, and, and, I mean, this is a guy that is that is strong enough to kill armies. You have to worry about Soul Slay and things like that. So you have to pick your targets kind of carefully. But certain types of armies without certain types of mage support can basically just be deleted. And that's super duper strong. Just having that uh, in your uh, in your hand of cards is going to completely change the way the opponent has to play. Now, what's the problem with getting this guy? The problem is, I, and I'm torn about the best way to do it. On, on one hand, you kind of want to go dormant because this guy can't do shit. The problem if you go dormant is, like, what are we going to be able to get for scales? We're going to get. Um, 
think for the bless we go. I think I ended up taking like minor magic resistance and arcane command. I probably should have gone magic weapons. If I probably, I mean, I definitely should have, because that will make it where my coral guard are going to be good against things like, I mean, all sorts of things like disease demons and horrors and other things. Um, and then reinvigoration is nice. I would go three reinvigoration, but I don't think. Uh, it's worth going all the way up to Earth 5. I mean, to Earth 6. Um, maybe it is if you go dormant. So if you go awake, what can you get away with? Probably 6 Dominion, and then you're going to have to take some sacrifices. I think we sack Drain, or sack Magic. Um, now, we've got a few scales, so we could just go like... Bloop. Uh, often, Luck is the kind of scale you want to tank it, or... Uh, or take it up to 3. I kind of like taking it up to 3, so I think what... We're actually going to do here is go turmoil, luck, like this. I hope this is the build I took. I, I should have taken it because it's zero. Let's actually go check. What build did I take? Cephalophilia. Uh, we took. Oh, we went up to six. Holy shit. Oh, so we took reinvigoration three. Uh, and we went awake. And of course we didn't do magic weapons, so that was a mistake on my part, we definitely should have. Uh, minor magic resistance is nice. Arcane command we probably could end up using somehow, but I don't really know. I should have done magic weapons, this was just dumb. Um, but yeah, you can see basically that cost us a scale here. Uh, we could have gone up to pro uh, productivity one. Um, the problem with this, though, is we can't really expand with our guy. Um, so on one hand, we want to have him early because we have an expander chassis, and getting an expander chassis dormant is kind of dumb, normally. But really, this guy is like a titan, and that titans are going to be... They're going to require uh, equipment, and once they have equipment, they're going to be able to hopefully come in and very early uh, after, you know, like turn 15 or something, and just start whooping up on players. Like, player armies, um... And that's basically... This guy, in some ways, is going to be better than all of these guys. Because A, he's astral. Uh, B, he's stealthy. And... Uh... Like, astral stealthy is freaking huge. And he has recuperation. So he has a lot of traits which make him better than all the titans for doing things titans are supposed to do. So, you totally could take him dormant, which is kind of what I wanted to do, but he's strong enough that if I take him awake, I might get a couple more provinces. Uh, any good research or site search? I probably should have taken him dormant. I don't. I take him awake. The problem is Atlantis has such shitty expansion. Or maybe I just haven't figured it out. If I could figure out Scale's expansion better, I would probably take this guy dormant. Uh, because I didn't really have time, I took him awake just to be safe so he could help with uh, early game expansion. Uh, the immobiles you could also do. Uh, but if you do the immobiles, you really have to figure out expansion. And wa the water provinces are weird, because what's important about water is there's usually a lot of choke points. And if there's a boatload of bad indies on a choke point, you can really be in trouble if you go scales. Like, if there's 50 Shark Tribe, 60 Shark Tribe, you have nothing which is going to deal with Shark Tribe efficiently. If there's a big old pot of Amber Clan, or sh uh, you're going to be in trouble too. So, getting this guy to go through a critical check point early, you know, you never know what the roll of the dice is going to be on the Indies, or maybe even where you start. So, uh, that was what we chose to do. Um... It would be fun to go scales. To go full scales and maybe fix some of your other magic diversity issues, but uh, this is going to scratch a lot of our issues. We're getting deep in, uh, very deep in Earth, so that we can potentially rush something like Earthblood Deepwell. Uh, we're getting very deep in Astral, so we can do Arcane Nexus and Wish, and which is going to be really good because we're in a big game. So, uh, anyway, uh, Pretty excited. If we get to, to use him, uh, I'm going to be pretty happy. 
Um, and I think that is about it for my pretender design. Uh, I will finish the episode by flashing up our pretender. Cephalophilia. And, uh, yeah. So he's got Reinvigoration 3, which should be Magic Weapons and Arcane Finesse. Now, the reason for this is we can throw Shrouds uh, on our mages, and they will benefit from the Reinvigoration. Also, the Reinvigoration will be pretty nice on our Sacred... Uh, on our Mother Guard. Magic Weapons would be really nice. Really nice. Wish I could go back and fix that. Um, it better not... I think it... It's only Astral 2, right? Let's see real quick. Yeah, it's only Astral 2. I totally could have gotten it. Really, really disappointing. I uh, blame it on Santa. So... I have no idea why I would have that. But anyway... Uh, should be fun. We went pretty high Dominion, which I think you kind of need to go. Uh, because... A lot of our strategy is going to be using this guy in the early mid-game and, like, jumping on people when they attack me. And for that to work, I really need to do it in my Dominion. So, Dominion 7 is nice because my Preachers can go in a temple and preach right on up to that. And, uh, hopefully I should have pretty good control of Dominion all over my little ocean. Uh, and so with that, I think we will call it. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.